Hey everybody, have you wanted to learn how to create coloring book covers that sell, or at least understand what makes a coloring book sell and how you can improve your skills? Well, I've got five tips for you, so be sure and stay tuned. Hi everybody, I'm Ashley with Publish with Ashley, and I'm here every pretty much Wednesday live, and I do uh, other shows, but please follow me on YouTube, like, subscribe. Yeah, I'd really appreciate comments, like, subscribes. It really helps me out. But I've got five tips for you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through my five tips, and then I'm going to share my screen, and I'm going to kind of walk you through some of these ideas so that you can see them. I'm a huge believer in not just giving you tips, but un so you can like showing you, visually showing you what I'm seeing or what I'm thinking and talking about it so that maybe you can understand it because I know it takes it takes time to understand this and every time you learn something new, you can you know add to your education and arsenal and things like that. Okay, so here are my five tips. The first thing you've got to consider, the very, very first thing you've got to consider is your audience. You need to think about who this is for and who's selling it and be the same person. Um, if you're an adult audience, you might be selling it directly to the person, like adult coloring books, but you might also be selling it as a gift, um, which means that it might be an adult to an adult or an adult to a child, that sort of thing. So you really got to consider your audience, okay? And you, you have to make your cover align with what your audience is expecting, what they like, and what will lure them in to convince them that this is the product that is going to solve their problem, okay? In the sense of this, it might just be, you know, a gift. Um, number two, what I wanna call composition and intent. Um, composition being kind of the overall look. Uh, you know, is it an intent, meaning does it all work together? Um, does your, what you're trying to create align with your audience? Does the rest of the graphics align with that? Does the, you know, are the graphics standing out? That sort of thing. Um, you really got to consider that. Now, number three is uh, the title. You have to make sure that the title is prominently displayed, especially for coloring books. Um, I know maybe for notebooks where the art is uh, more important than the the title, but in a coloring book, it's got to be on there in a way that captures the audience's attention. Now, my tip for titles is every single first letter should be capitalized in a title, okay? Don't capitalize some letters and not others. Now, there can be an exception for like the small connecting words like and, the, of, but honestly, the rule really in the U.S. is that every single letter first letter should be capitalized. So that's what I do. I always capitalize everything of the, I figure there's no reason not to, like you, you should do that. Now, if you understand the rules, there are ways to break the rules that are okay. But if you don't true, like if, especially if English is your, not your first language, or you're just not sure what to capitalize, what not, then just always stick with capitalization. But once you truly, really understand the rules, there are ways to break the rules because of a style. Um, but honestly, if if that's a, a concept, you're like, I don't know why you would do that, then just capitalize all the letters, all the first letter in the title, and you know, don't worry about the breaking the rules because you know the rules, because you'll just break them incorrectly and it will backfire. It's important, and that's really important because especially if you're doing like children's books or even adult books, if you have it, the grammar, you know, incorrect or not capitalized correctly, that tells the audience, the person, you know, purchasing it, that this is not a professional product. So just help yourself out by capitalizing every single first letter in a title, okay? Um, now, if you're just going to put the and, the as, you know, the and symbol, that's fine because that's just a symbol. Okay, so number four is color right the color has to um the colors you choose have to relate to your audience what you're trying to convey definitely make an attempt to look and does the color get the right mood does it just do what it's supposed to do and i know these are kind of vague but that's why i'm going to talk about them and show you examples um, number five is font um, font is really important you don't want to do more than i know the rules like it's like three, but I kind of stick with two. You really don't want to do more than two fonts. If you're doing more than that, it it tends to not work out well. It just 
unless you're a skilled graphic designer, if you're a skilled graphic designer and you know all the rules and things, that's fine. But I would do no more than two fonts and don't change in the middle of the title. Um, it's one thing if you have like, um, you know, there is ways to make it graphically okay to change, but generally I would keep it the same font. And then if you're going to do like a subtitle on the book, that can be a different font or there's ways. And I'll kind of show you when I go through and kind of point these things out. Um, the next thing is it has to be, of course, for font, it has to be readable from the thumbnail. If you can't read your title really easily as a tiny little thing, then it's probably not um, well done as far as a graphic. Now, it might look fine printed out in a big sized book, but remember people are purchasing this on Amazon, so it has to look good on a thumbnail. So it has to be readable as a small graphic, even if that feels really big for you, it still has to be readable. Okay, so those are my five things. Audience, composition slash intent, um, capitalization on your title. Do that correctly. It's really important. Um, it's like the first thing everybody sees. Uh, colors, consider your colors, consider your audience, consider if the colors of the font, whatever, work with what you're trying to um, sell. And font, you want no more than two fonts, really. Um, readable. Those are the two, readable from a thumbnail. Okay, so let me share my screen here, and I'm going to talk about it. Hello. Oh, let's see. Oh, you're living in, <laughs> in the moving mood, but going to make, make books. Awesome. Okay, let me share my screen. Got to find it. Uh, share screen. Okay. Sorry, I usually set it beforehand, so I just can press a button, but I didn't do that today. So here we go. Okay, so I just typed in coloring books for kids. So what I wanted to kind of go through is just some of these concepts. Okay, so audience. Right now we're focusing on kids, right? A coloring book for kids, but you have two audiences in this. You have the parent who is buying this and then you have the, um, you know, the person who's going to get it as a gift, right? Usually kids aren't shopping for coloring books on Amazon. They might be looking at a store shelf coloring books, but not on Amazon. That's usually the parent. Um, but parents know what kids like and kids like color. Um, they like lots of color, uh, usually in, in the lower the age, the brighter the color groups. So brighter color being, you know, the color wheel, um, red, uh, blue and yellow, right? And then all the, the corresponding colors, green, red and blue, you know, make green, red and blue make green, red and blue make purple, but yellow and blue make green. So the brighter, the younger the age, the brighter the color scheme. And as you get older, you can go into different color flares. Um, girls, it's more like the teens. You can do more of the pastels. Um, boys still do like the bright um, colors, but you can do lights or sh lighter shades of that. So that's something to consider um, the age group you're going for and the color palette you should be choosing for these types of things. Um, also, you know, is it, is it focused at girls? Is it focused at boys? Um, what is it? Uh, that sort of thing. Okay, so here let's look at some of the colors. Okay, so you can see they're pretty bright. Um, this mermaid one, it's focused on the four to eight group and it's going to be bright and colorful. Um, so look, you know, there's the, uh, the right thing to do. And now let's talk about, so like that color palettes. Now you can see this one is kind of, I think, a little less bright. Um, but it still, it conveys, okay, so it's called cute animals. And that's where I'm kind of going to this composition and intent. Cute animals has kind of a, a theme or some things that go with it, right? The intent of it is to kind of be, this is looks like kawaii, chibi, kind of that cute bubbly look. Um, and that can have cute, can have some pastels or brighter colors, things like that. So this kind of has that bubbly look to it. Um, you've got so that's kind of what the intent of it is aiming at the audience. Is it kind of all works together, right? It's got the right um, capitalization. This just has everything in caps, um, which is fine actually for a title because remember we want it readable. And look, they only have one font. It's very clear. You know, it's big. They make emphasize it by the big and the small uh, use. Cute animals is really big, so you can see it's a coloring book about animals. This one the same way. Mermaid coloring book right? Ages four to eight. It's all kind of on there. They've used, uh, this is probably two font, two fonts here, one, and then these are probably the same. 
uh, font. So that's kind of that um, dinosaur coloring book, two fonts. And look at the multicolors to make it stand out. Now, this is also well done that it's got kind of this for ages four to six. Um, this is OK. I would still capitalize this for ages four to six. But since this isn't the title, it's more just kind of a uh, emphasizing it. It doesn't have to be capitalized. But I still honestly, I always try and do that because parents are looking at this and saying, oh, it's it's not the right capitalization. But I think most people would be OK with this because it's not the sentence or the title. It's just kind of uh, more informative. But, you know, this is all capitalized throughout, which is totally fine, because yet again, with a coloring book, you're trying to make the title stand out from that thumbnail. So all caps is a way to do that and is perfectly acceptable, especially with a coloring book uh, and kids. Uh, let's see what other things I want to go with. Um, like I wish. Oh, OK, so here's one that's um, big, simple simple and big coloring book for toddlers. Now, this kind of goes with that whole audience. It's for very young kids, ages one to four. So it's going to have super simple drawings. You can see that they've done the brighter color schemes, right? They're sticking to, um, I probably even would have brightened up this blue a little bit brighter on the scale. Um, but it's, that's the type of thing you're looking for. Uh, they've kept to uh, big letters, you know, coloring book, and they've capitalized everything. Uh, let's see composition wise the simple drawings convey that this is a coloring book for smaller children right it, nothing can like more like here's the other one so this one is from 6 to 12 and you can see that they've got more detailed uh things that a 6 to 12 year old would be more interested in so that works well um, the fonts work they're big they're bold they're bright i did want to i can't find the example but there is an example um I lost it and I had to restart my computer, but there was a kid's book that wasn't selling. It was one of these coloring books for toddlers and it had a, a italics font. So it was like italics, kind of a handwriting font that doesn't make sense with a toddler coloring book because toddler, it's going to be block, print, that sort of thing. It's not, it doesn't make sense to have an italics type title because it doesn't fit the audience. The audience is small children who are not, they can't read handwriting. They can't even read big, simple letters, but maybe if at age four, their parents are teaching them, you know, B, S, A, but if it's in a script font, they're not going to recognize those as letters. So you really want to, you know, think about the fonts and make sure it shazzes with what you're doing. If you're making simple coloring books, you need to have a simple, big, bold font, simple, big, bold colors. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else? Uh, I know I wanted to do some on the next page. Oh, here's one. These two. So see how they're kind of these pastel colors. These are aiming at like kind of eh, six to eight. I, I think that's a little young for maybe this, but there are some kids who are more advanced in their coloring, but your nine to 12 year olds pastels, things like that are going to appeal to them. Uh, flowers, more detailed drawings, things like that. Um, I did want to shout out to this one. I thought this was really well done. It's really simple. There's not, you know, a whole lot going on with this, but it's got big, bold, bright colors. And I like how they had like the dinosaur actually stepping on the letters. That's a really good touch because it looks uh, just kind of more fluid, more um, put together as a whole, cohesive, right? And I think some people miss that. Um, this isn't bad. It, it's a gymnastics coloring book. It's you're going to have gymnasts. Uh, it's a little bit, obviously, usually your gymnasts aren't like the three. You can have some three-year-olds, but they're not going to probably be as advanced as some of these older ones. Um, so this has got a scribbly font and the font, the colors, but it's it's probably not as, um, I don't want to say it's, it's a little, it works, but I don't, I think it doesn't, it's not as fluid as this in the sense of see how gymnastics is across her and it still looks fine. But see how this really looks like it's taken the title and made it a part of the cover. And I think that's that's something you can try to do. Uh, let's see. What else? I know I wanted to do some more on the other page. Oh, I love this one. Okay. Cute cats. Look at this. Doesn't this say cute and cats? <laughs> okay. It's got this cute kitty. I know exactly from looking at this 
what should be inside. Now, I don't actually know if this has inside what I think it would be. And I think if I was purchasing it and I didn't have really cute bubbly type uh, drawings inside, I would be really disappointed. But to me, this can exactly what I hopefully is inside. It's good, good reviews, 608 and they're kind of close to five stars. So it's probably that. Um, but it's really well done in the sense I know exactly kind of what I'm getting from this cover. Cute cats. Um, coloring book for kids ages four to eight, right? And this is where Cal 4 isn't capped. That's okay. I probably would cut it, like I said, but four is one of those connectors. So it's not, you don't have to, but I always do. Okay, let's see. Um, mm, this is another one. First coloring book. Um, this is like kind of a handwriting font, not necessarily scripty. Um, but it's got a simple font. It's simple pages. Like it conveys what it is. Uh, let's see. What else do I got? Space. Oh, here's another one. I think, yeah, by the same author, Cute Dogs, right? <laughs> that looks exactly what I, I think I would be getting in that. Uh, cute animals, dot to dot, simple. Uh, let's see. I had one more I think I wanted to go to on the next page. Um, okay. Anxiety relief for teens. It's got some bold colors, definitely more intricate designs, which makes sense, right? Your teens are going to have things that are more intricate. Um, this one. So what I don't like about it is it feels like everything was kind of thrown on there. Coloring book. You can't really read it because it's a crossed in the dark color. Things that go, they've got kind of this darkening color scheme that doesn't make anything stand out. I don't feel this is very cohesive. Um, and hopefully you can kind of see that. And who is it for? Uh, it's vehicles, probably boys, but then there's a rainbow over here and there's a rainbow there. I don't know. I'm just not feeling who this is for, right? It doesn't speak to me. Whereas this bug book for kids, uh, it's got bugs, right? It's very obvious who this is for. Um, but you can see the kind of the difference between this. This stands out and, and feels cohesive, right? It's got this praying mantis that's partially colored in on a tree, bug book for kids. You can read all the words. You can't really read and here. That's kind of hidden. I probably would have done this white. Um, but you don't need that word to make it really stand out because you can get it. Oh, fashion. These are the ones I wanted to show you. So this one, I thought this was really well done. It definitely has a flavor for exactly who this is for. It's got a scripty font, teenage girl, but it's not too scripty, right? It's just, just enough. And it has um, kind of, yeah, I want to call them like, you know, the, the fashionista girls on there. So I know exactly what I'm getting with that type of book. Okay. Let's see some other ones. I think that was one of the biggest ones I wanted to show you. There was another fashion one down here. Um, I think the other one is a little better, but this one isn't too bad. Um, I think the cover, the title could be a little bit bigger, a little easier to read, but you can see pastel look is okay with that teen type, uh, but it's got edgy clothes, right? They've got bright colors, um, style, and things like that. Um, so that's kind of, it, it can work, um, but... I still think this probably could be a little bit more, I don't know, bold or something. So it stands out where this one, to me, if I was going to purchase between the two, I would purchase this one. To me, that just, it stands out more, right? Even though it doesn't have quite all the same color, they've done it and uh, uh, done it well so that it stands out. Okay. Those were the kind of the two I wanted to con contrast, like this one and the color one, and they're the same genre but I think one of them did a little bit better at making it stand out. Um, so, all right. Okay. Any questions? That's kind of all I had. I wanted to kind of go through my five things. Like I said, audience, composition, intent, meaning like, does, does all of it work together? Um, does your intent, this is fashion. I'm considering my audience. I have all of it um, together. I, I have something my eye gravitates towards these three girls, the words fashion, and they work together. Um, capitalization, that's very important. Colors, you know, pick your colors based on who this is for and uh, font that it's readable and that you shouldn't do too many fonts, like 
two, I think is fine. Um, that's usually what I stick to. I know there's some rules you can do like three, but honestly, I stick to two because I think more than that, I'm, I'm risking it looking funny. Okay. Um, what are some good fonts for covers in kids' books? I have a few. I have, um, what's the one I like? Kids Block, I think it's called. Um, but it's the bold ones. Like it just, you can use different ones. Like this one works really well because it's like a coloring font, but it's big, it's bold. Um, Mermaid, I might've done this a bit scriptier. This feels very, a little blocky. Like I, I kind of make stuff as I go. <laughs> I, I don't know. I like the, it. I pick a font based on what I'm trying to do. Like this fashion one is perfect, I think, for what this is trying to convey. And then it kind of did a little scripty thing down here, which is fine in a different font. Um, oh, you're not seeing it because I'm not showing it. Um, but yeah, I, it's hard to say exactly what fonts for kids because I just pick based upon what I'm trying to do. <laughs> um, but usually for little, the younger, it's going to be bolder, easier to read and teens and older, you can kind of start moving towards script fonts uh, or handwritten fonts that look a little bit more flowery or curly, depending if it's girls or um, boys, maybe you still stick with a, a straight handwritten font that's pretty plain. Um, any tools you know of the font name from any image? There, you know what? I will have to ask on my YouTube channel that. I have a uh, in Chrome extension that I've used and I have to look it up. I don't know what it is off the top of my head because I haven't um, used it in a really long time, but there's Chrome extensions that will do that. And I had one, uh, but I just haven't used it in a while. So make sure you ask that like after so that I, during the live stream, I can't see the any of the stuff you guys have typed. So ask it after so that I can remember to look it up and reply to you. Is there any other questions you guys have? That's all I had for today. I just wanted to kind of go over. I know someone asked about creating better coloring book covers, and I wanted to show you how I look at things. I look at, you know, like I said, the five things I kind of look at, does all of that work together? Uh, the audience, the colors, the fonts, the the composition of it, and um, yeah, the, and I, I put in title the five tips because I was looking through and I was so annoyed that people weren't capitalizing their titles correctly. I wanted to show you one. Oh, let me. I'm gonna go back. Add to stream. Let me go back here real quick, and I'm gonna go back. There was one I wanted to show you guys as, and I'm sorry if this is someone's. It's kind of. What not to do take this with the the nicest intent that it's meant <laughs> hopefully it's still on here when i go back um just to show you okay this one right here this hundred animal coloring book um a few things a hundred animal it's not centered it's not the right font for the audience it's small and coloring book isn't capitalized um so they capitalized it right here and then it says like Lily Jane books. Well, books isn't capitalized. Lily Jane is hidden. Um, I'm okay with it being to the side since it's the author. But this, though this graphic is cool, it doesn't, doesn't do it for me. The colors aren't bright enough. I feel like it's too far back. Maybe if they'd zoomed in and picked like one or two characters and then made it bigger, but the font doesn't really match. It's not centered. Like, those things are important. You've got to figure out how to get your cover, your title on your cover centered and making the capitalization right. This capitalization not being capitalized to me, honestly, as a buyer and a U.S. buyer, I would say this isn't professionally done. And then the font would confirm it for me because the font is so not right for the audience, meaning like a smaller, it looks like, yeah, four, kids four and up, right? So that's just not the right Font. It doesn't say kids to me. It says, I'm not sure what. So, um, let's see. Websites for public domain vectors. You know, I don't know. I, I don't use vectors too often. I mean, I know you, I'll look into some because I actually have a list of public domain uh, 
graphics. Like I have a whole list of places you can get the public domain. Uh, I know the like New York library and some of the US like libraries um, have a ton. So if you put like public domain uh, library images, libraries or something like that, there's a lot of uh, libraries in the US who have stuff that's just there you can download. But I think the thing with any public domain um, images, uh, they are, the search functions are very not good. <laughs> Honestly, the search engines are terrible. And so trying to find what you're looking for is sometimes a time consuming process. Uh, so that's usually what I found the most painful thing about public domain images is trying to find the right images quickly. Uh, I actually use timecamera.net or is it timecamera.com? Uh, I think it's timecamera.com. And you purchase the public domain images, but you can purchase them in collections. And so it's not very much. It's like six pounds, I think, for the download. It's quite a few images. It's like, depends. It can be three to 600 images. And I purchase them, even though I know you can get them for free, but it's because it takes me a lot of time to find the public domain images I'm looking for. So I actually just purchase them so that I can have them in a collection and I don't have to search. But that's, that's what actually I do with public domain images. I just buy them because <laughs> I don't want to have to search for them. Maybe that's bad, but they're not that expensive. Um, and I know you can get them for free, but I just don't like spending time trying to find anything because the search engines are kind of terrible. Uh, any other questions? Oh, if not, I'm will look at our list of public domain images. I have a bunch and I'll post that in my Facebook group or I'll do a video on it. It just depends what I get to first. All right, but I will pull up that list. All right, hello. Um, oh, where do I buy them from? It was time timecamera.com. Uh, I should check. Let me, I will check on that. I'm pretty sure it's timecamera.com. There's a timecamera. Yeah. Timecamera.com. So it's time T I M E camera C A M E R A.com time camera. That's, that's where I've just bought them because I don't like having to find them because <laughs> And they have a lot um, and it's not that expensive. It depends what your project you're doing. Just buy stuff you have, you actually have a project in mind for. So when I have a project in mind, I will go and purchase them. I don't have, a, I have like three of their sets, uh, but I purchase them specifically for certain projects. All right. Um, high selling coloring book ideas. Ooh, that's, let's see. Mm, okay. So, I don't know about high selling, but at least things that you could get on the uh, high in the search engine would be, I would think if you did some research into coloring books for children with uh, disabilities, uh, that would be one. Uh, I know I was talking to someone and they had uh, a child who uh, had a learning disability or was it something? They had some sort of learning disability and they liked a certain type of coloring book but it was hard to find a coloring book that was like, because they were older, like, um, you know, more times 10, but they liked a certain, like a, a younger type coloring book, easier things to color. Uh, so I would look into coloring books. This is just a research idea. And I think you could do well in it because I imagine it's not a hugely, uh, I don't think there's a lot out there. Cause I know she said she was looking for coloring books like this and really couldn't find it. But like, coloring books for kids with disabilities. So you'd have to kind of do a little research what kind of things that would be. But I think it might be easier to, since it's usually a simpler type coloring book, it's not as detailed, that might actually be easier to get the pages for and that sort of thing, um, since they would be more simple line drawings, but aimed at a certain type. Um, coloring books for seniors that are simple. I was actually looking at that the other day. Um, and that's kind of a thing as seniors get dementia. Uh, they're, they still want to color for relief and anxiety, but some of those really intricate drawings are very frustrating. Um, so finding simpler drawings on topics they would enjoy, uh, maybe like simple gardens, that sort of thing, uh, might be 
a way to go. So those are my ideas for that. It, you have to kind of niche down into something that other people aren't doing. Um, is, is that going to get you to number 200 in the bookstore? No. Is it going to get you to 20,000 in the bookstore? Yeah, it really could, um, which is still a really good selling coloring book. And if you can get a few of those, you know, and, and if you can do well in it and do it well, people will buy more of your books, right? They'll buy, if you have five of those type of books and they have one they like and their, you know, grandmother really likes that book, they'll buy the rest of your book, books. So um, you just got to kind of specialize that way and create, you know, four or five of them. All right. How do you find graphics for simple coloring books? Um, I look, let's see, I do mine on Creative Fabrica. And I also, I have a daughter <laughs> who can draw and I make her draw things for me. So, um, you know, child slave labor, I guess on that point. Um, but yeah, I have a, a daughter who can draw. So I pay her uh, $5 because, you know, she's my daughter. So I don't have to pay her a whole lot, but I pay her $5 for a simple line drawing. Uh, so I actually told her uh, she's going to college and I said I would uh, employ her through college if she'd be willing to do some more drawings for me. And I might pay her higher so she has some money for college. But uh, I do Creative Fabrica, um, design bundles. You can also take colored pages. And um, if they're line, they have heavy line drawings, you can take out the color. Um, you can even do that in PowerPoint. I have a video about that. Uh, let's see what other places. Uh, Creative, no, Hungry JPEG is another place I find graphics. Um, yeah, those sorts of things. It, it's not easy and you have to mix and match things you can't just like have you can't just take it because everyone's using the same graphics if you're buying it off those sites you've got to come up with a unique angle or do something a little bit different so that your pages kind of stand out hopefully that was helpful i will do um you know what i will do a follow-on video about like making coloring pages because i know that's something people are interested in and making simple pages where i get stuff how to do different things and I'll show you guys some of that. I know I have some videos in uh, YouTube about that already on my channel. All right. Um, that's it. That's all I have for today. I will talk to you all next week. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited. And like and subscribe. Please make comments, all that sort of stuff. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.